I think the last one was a rhetorical question because we all know that um, uh, racism is a big problem. Um, if you ask any of the right-wing populist parties, whether it's the Rassemblement National in France or AFD in Germany, uh, which, which the, what motivates their anti-migrant um, uh, policies, policy proposals? Well, they'll tell you it's race, and they, they won't be ashamed about it. So race is a major problem. But I think it's much more complicated than, if you like, black and white. Um, the problem is, how do we integrate um, young people from Africa and the Arab world um, who don't speak our languages very well, who are of a different religion, find it difficult to uh, be accepted um, by European society. So what do we do about that? Um, I have one uh, su suggestion that I think is very overlooked and very important. We have what is known as the women problem in migration. Mm. It is that quite simply are not enough girls for all the young men who make the hazardous journey to Europe legally or illegally. If we're going to raise the birth rates, if we're going to quell criminality, women, more women are the answer. And that's why it was a great mistake when European national governments started to crack down on family reunifications. The, the argument was, oh, there's no reason for Granny to come to. In fact, there was every reason for Granny to come to, because she'd bring, she'd bring her, her daughters and what have you, and she'd also do the, the babysitting while mm. the, the wife and daughters were out at work. So I think we have to stop being short-sighted uh, as well as being more open-minded. I can say that it is some kind of uh, black cat in the black uh, room. We know that it is exists, but we try not to see it uh, or, or just to uh, neglect it. But yes, we do uh, see the prejudices against uh, uh, racism, uh, uh, the, the, against the race, especially religion, at least in our regions, uh, on the east uh, part of the European Union. And this is a very uh, useful tool for creating myths and fake news about the migrants. And this is still uh, impacts uh, very highly in the opinions and willingness of uh, local population to accept any immigrants from uh, not uh, close uh, countries, but more far countries. Uh, so that's, it is the case and we need to accept it not, uh, as a fact, not as a necessity or a good thing, but we cannot hide it. And this is blow to our face. I could not agree more with you. Language is absolutely the, the key for good integration. Um, I'm from Denmark myself and I'm living in Germany right now. And I definitely know getting to know the German language was so important in order for me to get German friends. And now I have a German husband too, and that really does help. And I think language is a thing that, of course you can learn it at language school, but that you really learn through getting friends. You learn it when you are in the job market. So I couldn't agree more. It's about breaking out of, of our definition of how do you learn a language? No, it's not just in school. It's about getting out there. And the more support that we can get of events, it could be playing a sport together or doing an activity together where there is a shared passion and interest for a topic. I think this is definitely one of the keys to successful integration in the future. This uh, is uh, more, than, more, more than interesting and, and goes directly to, uh, to the point. Uh, 
Um, just to, to give you uh, an, an image um, uh, of, the, of the current situation, before two or three years, there were, there were discussions about providing um, Greek lessons to asylum seekers and refugees on a nationwide scale, supported by the government. Um, this policy and this planning uh, was abandoned. So in our experience, what, what we see uh, on our everyday um, communication and contact with people is that most of the times they are trying to uh, get access to, to, to a course, to a Greek course, but either the course falls through, um, let's say the, the class is not, um, is not sustained for too long, so people have to repeat the same things again and again, they are not given the chances or the support um, to take exams on, on their Greek skills. So, um, in a certain sense, um, they are not motivated enough. But on the other, on the other side, of course, it's the, the sense of precarity, uncertainty, uh, that is related to the legal processes that makes it hard for someone to focus on an educational route, on an educational, let's say, perspective. And this is the, the difficulties that um, come from the actual legal, uh, but also social, uh, socioeconomic state of people uh, that are asylum seekers and refugees in Greece. But definitely um, having a better access to the, to the Greek labor market, to the European labor market in general, is related uh, to the to the ability to the to the language skills, and we've seen that we have experienced that many times. People with um, language skills can can have a better salary, better working conditions, while uh, people that have no language skills are have no other option but to stick to their community. Maybe in the network in networks that. Um, are related to exploitation, so um, that makes their uh, their working conditions uh, very very harsh. Thanks so much for sharing your story. It's so motivating to hear. And actually, my background is also not my parents, but my great grandparents were refugees from Germany at the time, but they fled as political refugees to Denmark in 1933. So I know the importance of getting a job um, and well, I guess first learning the skills and then getting a job, how important that is to succeed in the future. And of course, this both on a human level, it gives dignity to earn your own money, but also on a society level, it is so much cheaper for the states one should turn people who were receiving social benefits into taxpayers. So I completely agree with you. Um, the challenge is really who is gonna um, invest in education. And of course it should be the companies, they're ultimately benefiting from it. Um, but at Ready School that I started, it's a tech school for refugees. We completely share your mindset. At the moment there's 96,000 available jobs in the German IT industry. So the companies are desperate for talent. And what we are then trying to do is to help our students. They come from 63 nationalities and give them the tech skills needed, whether it's coding, data science, IoT, and really make sure that they both get this, the technical skills, the soft skills, and also the professional network in order to land a job in the end. So I couldn't agree more. The success really lies in good job market integration. Definitely, definitely, um, and it, uh, it requires um, a, a national strategy for migration, uh, for sure, um, a national strategy that takes into consideration the actual needs of the people, the actual, the actual needs of, of economy, of social life, social relations, etc. And of course, it requires supporting and not making life of um, civil society organizations and initiatives difficult because we have also experienced that in, in, in Greece. Um, 
civil society organization, NGOs, etc., um, face great difficulties um, in trying to support people based on certain uh, government policies. 